Now we're going to talk about mechanism of sweat stimulation. So heat stimulates preoptic area of anterior hypothalamus. This area basically senses the warm temperature of the blood, which stimulates autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system gets activated, which stimulates cholinergic fibers, and acetylcholine is uh, secreted, which stimulates uh, sweat glands and dermis via M3 receptors. And in ductal portion, you have reabsorption of sodium and, and chloride, which uh, in, in the result, in the end, produces hypotonic sweat secretion. An unacclimatized person sweat less, but has increased uh, sodium chloride concentration in the sweat. However, acclimatized person exposed, exposed to warm temperature for one to six weeks sweat more and uh, has more evaporation and cools down faster. Acclimatized person has less sodium in sweat due to reabsorption of sodium by aldosterone. Basically, aldosterone uh, adds in those uh, sodium channels and stimulates sodium uh, potassium ADPase to reabsorb more sodium. The climatized person thus has lower body temperature and uh, heart rate. So sweating causes dehydration and that causes um, decrease in ECF volume and hence um, it causes hypertonic volume contraction. Basically when you're given this uh, in your board exams you are given this graph uh, where you have this box and everything you know that's a normal so anytime you have hypertonic volume contraction let's suppose you have volume here and contra uh, you have tonicity here concentration and you want to know uh, where uh, how does this hypertonic volume contraction occurs? You have um, less volume, basically right here. This is your volume, and, and this is basically con uh, contracted. This is contracted, but you have more concentration. So concentration would be more. So that's so that's how uh, this is what hypertonic volume contraction uh, means. You have uh, less volume due to decreased ECF volume. You have less volume in the blood, and then but the tonicity uh, or and the concentration of uh, solutes have increased so that's how you have increased concentration here and this 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 graph this part shows that right here so this way you can kinda uh, understand anytime you're given a uh, graph like these or uh, photos like diagrams like these you can kinda devise on by yourself okay moving on there are different types of sweat glands. Epocrine are located in axilla and perineum. And uh, perineum is basically inguinal area. And these secretions are milky and uh, viscous and odorous. So, uh, and bromohydrosis uh, is the sweat that causes body, body odor. Then you have eccrine. That's located all over the body, especially increased in palms and soles, and this is the uh, these produce uh, hypotonic fluid, hypotonic fluid, and up to three liters of sweat loss causes dehydration and cardiovascular collapse and hypotension, plus hypertonic volume contraction. Another is apoecrine as well. Then you have a mechanism of sweat secretion. So as we mentioned, sympathetic nervous system is stimulated and uh, you have sympathetic nervous system post ganglionic nerves innervate sweat glands. They secrete acetylcholine. 
Acetylcholine binds M3 receptors on secretory cells, also called clear cells in secretory coils. The, uh, let me kind of show you. You can always like Google th this as well where uh, the sweat glands, but this is where that is. This is the secretory coil in the dermis and then this is the ductal portion now. So this is duct, this, this is duct and this is the these are the secretory coils. And in secretory coils you have clear cells they are also called uh, secretory cells and they have M M3 receptors on them. So acetylcholine binds M3, recep M M3 receptors. M3 receptors interact with GQ protein an alpha subunit of GQ that was bound to GT GDP at rest now binds GTP and uh, you have uh, this alpha GQ uh, subunit dissociates and activates phospholipase C and phospholipase C converts uh, basically breaks down uh, PIP uh, from lipid bilayer to uh, inositol triphosphate which is basically IP3 and DAG diacylglycerol. So PIP and breaks down into IP3 and uh, DAG. DAG plus calcium later on activates protein kinase C and it has further physiological functions. So we're going to talk about IP3 here. IP3 binds endoplasmic reticulum and we know that uh, endoplasmic reticulum has calcium stored in it and that basically opens the calcium channels and re um, that releases calcium intracellularly and that inter uh, increase in cytosolic calcium con concentration stimulate transport of sodium potassium 2 chloride uh, via um, sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter co-transporter located located on basolateral side of clear cells so these clear cells basically have uh, sodium potassium pumps also they do all they also have so here's uh, a clear cell this is sodium potassium adpas and then they also have this sodium potassium 2 chloride co-transporter and that's how they bring in uh, they bring in all these ions and um, sodium is kicked out by sodium potassium ADPase while potassium has its own channels right here and all you're left with is increase in chloride concentration in the cell and that chloride basically leaks out through chloride channels in the lumen so basically this is the lumen and this is the blood or basolateral side you can say I think basolateral so yeah this is the blood side or basolateral side I should say and this is the apical side uh, A for apical, B for basolateral. So, so this is the quick mechanism you can kind of get some uh, pictorial of that, visual of that. So moving on. So K, as I mentioned, K leaks out of the cell while sodium is kicked out via sodium potassium ADPs, causing increase in uh, chloride concentration inside the cell. Chloride goes to the apical side of the membrane and ultimately goes out of the out in the lumen of sweat gland coil so sodium now you have higher concentration of sodium here in uh, uh, at basolateral side which basically moves in paracellularly this is the movement of sodium and meets with chloride meets with chloride in the lumen and uh, due to sodium and chloride meeting together in the lumen now water follows that sodium chloride so in ducts 
in ductal portion uh, of the sweat gland that is also located in the dermis as the sweat solution goes up the lumen to the ductal portion of the gland sodium and chloride are reabsorbed into the cell from lumen via epithelial sodium channels and cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator respectively so sodium through sodium channels and chloride through cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator channels and they cause uh, sweat to become hypertonic because now you have reabsorbed all that sodium and chloride that was uh, released in the lumen and uh, that reabsorption in the ductal portion uh, causes the hypotonic uh, sweat. However in cystic fibrosis you have defective CFTR channel and then that channel cannot reabsorb chloride due to which you have hypertonic sweat secretions and as hypertonic sweat and other secretions in the body.